Okay, thanks Mark and Kelly for joining us today. Could you please introduce yourself and TransUnion? Good morning, I'm Kelly Fielding. I'm the Managing Director of Consumer Interactive at TransUnion in the UK. TransUnion is a global insights and information business. Uh, good morning, my name is Mark Reed. I'm Senior Account Director of Data Breach Support Services at TransUnion in the UK. So has the COVID-19 pandemic increased the risk of data breaches? Yes, risks have increased as a result of the pandemic. That's largely due to the changes we've seen in working practices and people working remotely or, or hybrid working where they're mixing home and office. And that brings with it increased risk for, for a few reasons. Firstly, it, it's more difficult to put the same security protections in place across all devices when people are remote versus how we would have had things previously. And then also hybrid working leads to more devices being transported. So there's a greater chance that devices will be lost or, or stolen. So there's an increased risk of the, the physical security breach. And then to facilitate remote working during the pandemic, we've needed more software. So Zoom and Teams and, and such like. And that can bring increased risk as well because it adds more avenues that criminals can target. And also employees have got more passwords to remember. So there's a, a greater risk of human error. So... Yes, the risk has increased and our research has found that business leaders expect 43% of their workforce to continue to, to be working from home or hybrid working in the future. So I expect the, the risk to continue to rise. Thank you. That's brilliant. And my next question is uh, related to the same, same the previous question, which is what are the risks uh, businesses facing when it comes to data breaches? I think uh, increased 5G bandwidth potentially means businesses are more at risk because it enables more devices to be connected. Cyber criminals are always looking to exploit weaknesses in the defenses of businesses, be that via scareware, phishing, or, or similar scams. There are 30 billion Internet of Things devices set to be online by 2025, at an average of four per person. And with 127 new devices connecting to the Internet every second, it's clear that there are more and more sources of risk emerging. Uh, working from home can make people more susceptible to phishing attacks, which are the most common type of digital fraud related to COVID-19 globally. That's according to TransUnion's own global analysis. In fact, phishing attacks are responsible for nearly a quarter of all UK data breaches, according to the Information Commissioner's Office. Thank you. And the next question is more towards uh, preventing breaches. So how can businesses protect consumers in the event of data breach? It's really important that businesses protect their customers in the event of a data breach to help minimise the, the chance of financial loss and to protect their brand reputation. One way of doing that is to provide credit report and dark web monitoring services to customers that have been affected. So at TransUnion, the, the data breach service that we offer includes credit monitoring, dark web monitoring, with email notifications to alert consumers of key changes to their credit file or evidence of their personal data being found on the dark web. This helps to protect them against identity theft as they can quickly spot any potentially fraudulent activity and, and take prompt action. Thank you. And so what would you say, Mark, uh, that data breaches are an uh, inevitable part of working life? And if so, why? It's a, it's a sad fact that the, the combination of increasingly sophisticated cyber attacks as well as human error, which will always play a significant part in the typical causes of a data breach, mean that they're something that is part of life and is here to stay. That's why in addition to any proactive measures that help you guard against threats as thoroughly as possible, it's important for businesses to operate in a way that I guess assumes a data breach is likely to happen at some point in the future. This means having a robust incident response plan in place is, is crucial to deal with any data breach to help protect consumers. It really could be a matter of when and not if a breach occurs. So Kelly, how can businesses bounce back from a data breach and retain consumer trust? Well, last year, data breaches in the UK were reported to have cost impacted businesses £3.4 million on average. And a fifth of businesses who experienced a data breach lost customers as a direct, direct result. So it's, it's material for, for businesses. I think speed and clarity of response are crucial in retaining customers and building trust after a breach. You need to have an in-depth plan in place to communicate with your customers, notify them of what's happened and offer them solutions that, that keep them protective and, and importantly give them peace of mind. So our true identity solution at TransUnion allows businesses to offer their affected customers 
credit report and dark web monitoring, as well as online educational resources to help with credit management, to help them if they've been a victim of fraud, and, and help them with identity theft prevention. It's a really helpful tool to give customers support and peace of mind at a troubling time. Thank you. Uh, and Mark, what's uh, your advice to businesses to protect against the data breach? I've said for, for a number of years, the top priority is to always train regularly and communicate with staff, particularly those that are now hybrid or remote working, but perhaps they've always been. Uh, but given that phishing accounts for half of COVID-19 related scams, according to, to our data, being taken in by one of these scams is often the starting point that leads to a data breach or to a company being ransomed for their data. Businesses should always look to provide approved technology that is, of course, up to date with the latest patches and updates. And if possible, have a few devices in reserve, be that for temporary contractors or indeed new starters. And that will help to reduce the window of opportunity for data breaches too, because you'll know you're able to share devices that you know to be secured from the word go. Thank you. And so you've touched on the, um, the phishing being a majority of the attacks. So Kelly, the question is for you. How can you help staff to avoid falling victim to a phishing attack? You need to encourage employees to be extra vigilant when opening links and attachments in emails and train them how to spot a phishing attempt. So many of these are currently purporting to be COVID-19 updates and, and that's really catching people off guard. So remind staff to look out for emails that claim to be from legitimate companies but appear to be urgent or threatening in their instructions. And then emails that contain spelling mistakes or don't come from the right email domain can they, you know, they're also clues. So um, watch out for those things. These schemes are always evolving though. So sending regular updates to staff about scams, what to watch out for and just reminding them of the risk is, is key too. So Mark, what's the biggest mistake that businesses make after a data breach? I'd say not having a robust incident response plan in place prior to a data breach happening would be the biggest mistake. If you plan ahead and are ready to act, it can significantly reduce the harm caused. Third party assistance could be crucial. That could come from legal advisors, crisis communications, or indeed data breach support services like those on offer from, from TransUnion. This assistance can minimize the overall damage to the customer and to your bottom line, uh, as well as helping to reduce the chances of legal issues further down the road. If you aim to contain an incident without the support of external parties, sadly that can inadvertently make more trouble for the business. The instinct could be to keep a breach quiet in order to contain the fallout, but by doing that, the incident could become too great to manage in-house. Do you think business are suitably prepared for a data breach today? Our latest research found that over a fifth of businesses say they either feel unprepared or uncertain that they could respond effectively to a data breach. And often businesses overestimate how prepared they are. So I think it's likely that this number is even greater. And also then being able to respond quickly enough was the main concern reported by the underprepared businesses in TransUnion's research. When dealing with a data breach, the speed of response to the incident is absolutely crucial. In some cases, you'll need to let the regulator know within the first 72 hours and to notify the affected consumers in what is described as without undue delay. Um, businesses need uh, that regularly updated and tested plan in place that include measures to protect consumer identities and finances. Uh, we actually have a new ebook that lays out our straightforward ABC approach to handling a data breach and retaining consumer trust. Uh, that's free to download from TransUnion's UK website. Kelly, Mark, thank you for your time. Thank you very Pleasure. much. Pleasure, thank you.